This week, I'm testing a revolutionary pan. This is a carbon steel pan, but it's aluminum based. So why an aluminum based carbon steel pan? I'm gonna get into that in this video. I'm gonna season this pan from scratch and I'm following the manufacturer's recommendations for seasoning, which little teaser, I struggle with. So, you know, if you've struggled with any seasoning, you may find this video interesting, but if you're interested in the future of cookware, this one is definitely for you. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so what's this crazy talk? Stainless steel, aluminum, carbon. This doesn't look like a carbon steel pan. It's super duper duper light, and that's the point. So this is from a company called Strata. It's actually a bunch of engineers out of Maryland that like to invent cool things. And they saw what I see is a big problem, and that's the nonstick cookware market. And they also realize that a big complaint with carbon steel and cast iron cookware is weight. So they went around and decided, how about we engineer a pan that works like carbon steel and feels like a good quad of aluminum, right? It has the same sort of weight. So this pan here is a 10 inch that they have sent to me for free. And just to be clear, they gave it to me for free. And I'm like, great, I'm gonna make a video if it's good, and I'm gonna make a video if it's bad. Because if it's bad, I don't want anybody out there spending their money on this. So I've either made this video, this is past me talking to future me, I've made this video because either A, I like it and I think it's great, or B, I don't like it and I think it sucks. Right now, I have no idea. This is brand new, it's just out of the box. I haven't used this at all. So you have no idea, I have no idea. We're gonna go through this together. So let me get back to the text on this guy. So 2.3 pounds this guy is, Comparably to, say, a Dubaié, the same one is two some odd pounds more. So it's about half the weight-ish of the same pan in carbon steel. But the question, is this going to perform similar or like? So that I'm not sure. Like, I, I kind of have my doubts. So let's take a hunch. I kind of have my doubts a little bit. There may be some problems. Aluminum is a great conductor. It heats well, but it heats rapidly. It's not gonna hold the heat the same way as an iron pan. That's just straight up. But is that gonna solve a problem? And let me tell you firsthand. So for those of you that know me, know this channel, I have retail stores. I have dealt with tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people in my career of 30 some odd years of selling cookware. A big issue for a lot of people always is weight. Oh, it's too heavy. I would love to use carbon steel pans, but it's too heavy, it's too heavy. I can tell people to go and lift some iron all day long and get stronger, but <laughs> that only meets it halfway. There are people that have you know, carpal tunnel or arthritis or some sort of issue in their hands and they want lighter weight solution. They wanna get rid of nonstick. They don't wanna use light cookware, but they don't wanna have heavy cookware. They want the perfect cookware. So I get that. Is that this? Is this the perfect cookware for that large group of people? This isn't just a subset. There's a lot of people that shy away from using iron because it's too heavy. Did they solve a problem? So that's what we're gonna do right now. So these guys have sent this to me. It is stainless steel on the outside. It is carbon steel on the inside. This one is a, a sample that they have, one of their first run. It's been finished with a peanut oil, they said. Won't be a peanut oil in the ones that they're gonna have for sale. It's going to be a seed oil of some sort. Uh, it is a hollow stainless steel handle. Uh, and it's got a really comfortable handle. Like right now, just out of the box, it feels like grabbing an all-clad D5. You know, the, the handle is much more comfortable than all-clad. Again, people that watch this channel know I'm not partial to the all-clad handle. I don't like it. This one is very comfortable. It, it, all angles, whichever way I hold it, uh, it's great. It's got a little Y here, uh, so it, and I'll have a close-up of that here, um, that is a riveted handle, but it's got a stay cool Y, which is great, so it's not directly into the pan the handle. Uh, so that is definitely going to help with some of the heat, I'm sure, that design, you can just see that, it's obvious. Uh, but the real question here, is how is this going to season and is this going to become a relatively nonstick pan? Is this going to meet our expectation of using something like a Dubai? Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to scrub this down, take the peanut oil off, and they suggest 
to season this on the stovetop. So I like an oven seasoning. You could fully season this in the oven, no problem. Like it's a full on metal pan. There's nothing that you're gonna damage. But they recommend, because it being aluminum based and the heat is going to go all the way up the sides, they recommend doing the on stove seasoning, the stove top seasoning. So I'm gonna do that using my own cook culture seasoning paste. I could do it easily with a grapeseed oil or canola oil. I'm going to get it to a medium temperature. I'm not going to bring my oil to smoke that I really like to keep my oil below smoking point and go for longer and polymerize that and make a nice seasoning. I'm going to do it until I get a carbonization. So I might do two different layers, um, but I'm going to be doing this quickly. This is kind of a one and done. I'm going to, or maybe two and done, but I'm not going to take a long process. I'm going to do this in 20 minutes or so and then start moving on. Cause that is what they're saying to me that you should be able to do this with this pan. I have some of the best results of creating a, a true hardened a seasoning on my iron when I do a nice long process in the oven. I cook a lot of non-fatty foods and that creates some carbon. It can peel away a, you know, a young non-stick uh, or stick-free seasoning. And so I like to make sure I get a rock hard finish using multiple layers in the oven that can take time. I like to do like a 12 hour cycle per. So that takes some time. That we're not gonna do. We're gonna do this quick and easy on the stove top. I'm gonna make this happen. We're gonna go straight into cooking some fried onion. So we're gonna do a, a cooking of some sort with a fried onion. And then we're gonna go to the egg test. So first thing, I'm gonna get this washed in the sink and then we're going to start seasoning. Okay, so things are warming. The pan is warm up to the edge. It's hot enough to melt wax. So I'll get wax on there. So I am using seasoning paste. So this is what we make ourselves. The seasoning paste is a combination of grapeseed oil, canola oil, and local beeswax. So all Canadian oil and beeswax. Um, I find, as you can see, using a paste, you can apply just the right amount to the pan. And now I'm going to leave that at that temperature and just let that cook. As you can see, there's no smoke happening, um, which is totally fine. That's what I want. And it's just going to cook and cook and cook and start to become dull. It's shiny right now and it'll become dull. So I can leave this at this temperature now, being you know a decent quality pan, as obviously it, it, it is, I know by the weight and just the, the way in which it's not smoking or creating any funny brownie spots, so there's no wheat spots in it so far, um, that is nice and even. Uh, it's going to just cook evenly here, so uh, it's nice and warm. Uh, and we're just gonna let that sit for several minutes. And then what I'm gonna do is take that off, let that cool, and then I'm gonna do that for a second time. So there's stage one en route. Okay, so that pan is cool now. It feels good on the bottom. It's a little bit tacky up here. Then that is not hot enough. That's part of what I don't love about seasoning on the stovetop. If this was gas, it'd be giving it more an overall heat. Um, so gas would be a better heat source for this type of seasoning. However, they do suggest that halogen or induction works totally fine and it's a bit tacky. It's not the end of the world, but I would love it if it was felt dry and non tacky all over the pan, the oven would do that. So we're going to stick with what we're doing. I'm not going to go to the oven. I'm going to just follow the instructions and that's totally fine, but we've done one seasoning. I'm going to do the next season here. I'm going to heat it up, put on the, the paste, and then I'm going to cook it for 10 minutes or so, and then we're going to start cooking. So here we go. Okay, so there is a nice golden finish to it. So it's, it's looking great. It's taking a season really nicely, and uh, the pan, it's just strange to pick up a, a pan that's seasoned like that and it being so light. It's wonderfully light, this pan. Uh, and the handle, right up, mm, it's hot there, about there it's hot, but that's totally great. I, and this pan's been cooking for, you know, 10 minutes. I went and did other things while this just sat and cooked. And the no smoke thing that I've mentioned a couple of times in this video, I have another video that I'll put in the notes of this video about not needing to come to smoke. So smoke and seasoning, we've used that as a gauge in the past 
and it will work. Like once your pan is smoking, it is seasoning, but you don't need to smoke. So chemically for it to bond to the pan, smoke isn't required. It's not the thing that tells you that that has happened. It's just an indicator that it has happened. It's an indicator, not the, the proof that it's happened. I guess what I'm kind of trying to get to. Uh, it's not the causation, it's a correlation <laughs> using more technical words. Uh, so as you saw, there was no smoke. I didn't create smoke, even a wisp of smoke the entire time. And I've got a really nice hard seasoning. The, the oil is polymerized, so it's, it's a win. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is get this guy back on to the heat. I'm gonna go to the same heat as I polymerized with, a six out of 10, so just above half. Uh, it, the pan is, is wonderfully hot already. So I'm gonna put in a little bit of oil and we are going to cook some onions. So kind of the first cook uh, before we do an egg test. So here we go. Okay, so we're on a six. I'm gonna get a little bit of oil in that pan. Get it all around. So that is, you may hear, I don't know if you can hear it, got a little bit of a, of a sound of that on, so you can hear the pan on and you can hear it off. So I don't get that with iron. This is a lighter aluminum based pan and there's a tiny bit of noise that's coming from it. That's the reaction on the induction with a lighter aluminum pan. That's just the nature of induction. Uh, it's the power pushing against the pan that's creating the energy. So it is what it is, not a big deal, uh, but that's maybe the sound that you hear. So oil's in, onions in, Okay, so we're starting to get to a point where these guys are, are cooked, uh, they're browning. I took the heat up just a tiny bit to seven. Uh, it's good to see the pan taking a bit more heat just to giving it some browning. Uh, so I think I'm gonna leave them about here. Then we're gonna move on to some fried eggs. And I think with these onions, I'm going to cook an omelet. So we'll come back to an omelet at the end. So I'm gonna go straight in to uh, cooking the eggs right in there. So we're gonna get that back onto a seven. And we'll get some oil on that pan. And maybe a tiny bit more. And that's great, just in that edge there. So all around. Then we're gonna give that a couple of minutes bring this thing up to our, or not even a couple of minutes, it'll be a minute or so. Uh, and then we'll do two fried eggs in here. And part of what I'm gonna see, I'm gonna get them kind of into the middle. I'm interested to see how this pan has been made for its convexness. Uh, I haven't uh, really talked to them about that. I've, I've talked to them about a lot of different things of how this pan was made, but not so much its convexness. So this pan is not, changing its shape or spinning whatsoever. Uh, so it's on induction top. I know lots of people do have problems with induction and the oil is moving a little bit out to the edge, which is to be expected. And, but it's staying, you know, relatively flat, but it will be moving its way out there, which, you know, a convex pan should be made convex. It should have a tiny bit of convexness to it. Uh, so let's get these guys on there. And that's staying in place pretty well. Try this side of the pan. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's those guys have stayed where they need to be really well. So uh, just the way they sit is, is excellent. Um, you know, even in some of my carbon steel in the Dubaier pans, things can roll sometimes really quite quickly. Uh, so this is, this is nice, you know, it's got a nice, fairly level, flat base to it. Uh, as you can see, the oil is all around the, the edge, but if this seasoning is any good, it's gonna stick on, the protein will stick, and then it's gonna lift. So if I tried to move this now, I would create a mess, but if I wait a couple of minutes, it's just gonna come right off. And how you want this egg is a personal preference. If you want it brown, I've got it a seven, so I'm cooking it a little bit hot. Uh, I could probably go down to a six and have less browning. So if you don't like brown, cook at a lower heat. If you like browning, then cook at a higher heat. So get that guy there. So I can feel that egg 
te sorry, the, the onion texture underneath. And I could probably leave that for just a few more minutes. That, those eggs are still pretty undercooked. I did bring the heat down just a little bit on those guys. Okay, so a little bit of onion residue um, created a little bit of, of stickiness, but really all in all, that's, that's fantastic. That worked out just great. That's not a hard turn. Right, so there's that guy. And that guy, okay. So a little bit stuck on here. Again, I probably in hindsight, I uh, could have given it a scrub after the onions. Um, in a really well seasoned to buyer pan, I don't need to do that. This is a newer seasoning. I'm pushing the envelope, pushing the boundaries a little bit here, but you know, it's well seasoned underneath. I just took that egg off. Uh, I'm gonna take this to the sink and I'm gonna give it a quick scour with the chain mail and then bring this back and then we'll move on to doing a omelet. Okay, so that guy there, there's the surface cleaned after I took it to the sink. I also took this guy to the sink uh, when he was hot and put him under some you know, fairly cool, you know, warm, a little bit warm, lukewarm water, uh, just to see, do we get any uh, change of shape? Are we gonna warp the pan by a bit of thermal shock? We'll see. Uh, I used chain mail on it and it stood up really, really well. Uh, so now we're gonna get it back onto the stovetop and heat it and do an omelet. All right, so now we're going to put on some oil and let that, that heat up get that all around do its job and heat up nicely all right so we're gonna use three eggs and then we're gonna use some of our onions and get those guys on All right, so I like using a silicone spatula for this job over using, like this will work just fine using my, my you know, what they call a fish spatula, even though I'm not cooking fish, uh, it, it would work fine, but I find this does really help when we're trying to get in there to lift the edge. Okay, so what we're gonna do on you could season more and do some cheese or whichever you want to from there but that's just a you know simple simple omelet western style omelet that I'm just gonna flip over and let that cook right through I'm actually gonna move. Nope. I need to go to this guy. All right. What I want to do here. This pan, for me, I don't usually cook an omelet in a 10-inch pan. So this is a large pan. Yeah, I'm just having a little bit of problem because of the size. I usually cook that in a in a smaller size. But anyways not pretty that is a user error more than anything 
but you're gonna bring that guy out and that could be prettier that's not the most beautiful <laughs> I've ever done by a long way um, but it's not the pan I would originally choose but I think for where we're going here, that was not a bad result for how quickly, like this is not the way I would love to do it, but um, let's just review that. So I'm gonna put this all down, give this guy a little clean up. I'll show you just cleaning this quickly in the sink, and then we'll have a quick review of this pan. Okay, so all of a sudden it's the next morning. So I finished the video yesterday, and you know, did the omelet that was adequate, and the pan was showing signs of working well. But when I reflected on the video that I finished yesterday, I did a conclusion and finished it all up, I didn't love the result that I got, but I liked where the pan was going. I felt the pan was had a really good potential. So I decided, okay, I need to step back a little bit. I don't like pre-seasoning pans on my induction or even on just like a, a flat top surface. Uh, if I'm going to do pre-seasoning, gas is adequate. Uh, I don't love just a flat surface and I really, really like doing my seasoning in the oven. So that's what I wanna do. These guys say that you can do the seasoning on the stove top, it's adequate. It's not what I want. So I'm going to do two rounds into the oven. Nice and simple. I'm not gonna take a lot of time with it, but I'm gonna get these two rounds done. And then I'm gonna do the same omelet again and see if I can get a, a better result. Because I think it was going in the right direction. I think this pan has potential, so I'm very optimistic now. And I really wanna be able to show this you know, and I have no idea if this is gonna be right or wrong, but I wanna show what the results are once I have a seasoning that I'm really happy with. So here we go. Okay, I'm feeling much better. So there's that pan. It's looking as I want it. Will this be the answer? I'm not totally sure. I, I really just wasn't comfortable with how things were turning out before. Cause I, like I said, I think this pan has some potential. There's no reason why it shouldn't. Like the, the basic elements of how the pan is made makes sense. And so it should be working out. Uh, I just didn't like the way in which the, the seasoning was. Uh, so we're, we're doing it this way. We're going to now cook another omelet exactly like I did before and see what happens. Here we go. Okay, so I've given this pan several minutes to heat up and we are going to get our oil all around so we're getting a good heat I've got it a little bit higher at a seven that heat that oil is good everything's well coated and let's get that on there okay so I like those bubbles. I really like those bubbles in there. All right. Now that omelet is doing what I want it to. That omelet makes me very, very happy. Okay. This is what I had hoped was gonna happen when I cooked with it the first time. So this is definitely a seasoning issue. So somewhere to kind of hammer home here is, uh, here, let me pull the camera up and look at you while I'm talking to you. This is definitely a seasoning issue. So this is where, you know, seasoning can become really problematic and not one way to season is the right way. Some people can season a one and done, like I was trying to achieve and they struggle and things are hard and it just doesn't catch. And I, I talk to these people every day because that's what we do. We support people that are trying to, to do this in our business and they are having a problem. And so they strip it down, they try it again and they, they're trying to do it the kind of one and done way. That's why I love the oven seasoning. It, it is 100% solid for everybody. It's just going to work. Uh, so if you, one and done works for you, great. If you're struggling, maybe the oven. So let's get back to getting this omelet onto a plate. All right, so that guy is cooked there. And onto that plate. And so 
that pen is in beauty shape. Now, on that, you know, a little brown, I was maybe chatting a little too long, but uh, whichever, it's, it's cooked perfectly, everything about it, but that pen is excellent. Okay, so the problem that I had, I think is resolved. So this pen is amazingly light. It's wonderful, but it cooks well. We've created a good nonstick finish that I'm happy with. That was a bit of a struggle, but I believe we're there. Other people may have had a better time than I did doing it on the stovetop. This is the way that I like to do it. This is the way that I believe in it. And I think this pan can be seasoned well and become, as we saw, pretty much a nonstick skillet, which is amazing. So I'm stoked on Strata. I think they've crushed it and I hope they do very, very well with their, I think it's Kickstarter that they're using. I'm not sure if I find the information, I'll throw it in the, the notes here. I don't even know when they're going live with it. That wasn't the purpose of this video to promote their pans to sell. Of course, they want me to tell people that it's great. I've tested it. I think it's great so far. I don't, haven't found anything that I think can go wrong with this pan. So yeah, for sure. I, if this is something that you wanna get behind, they've got some sort of a special deal that they're offering for their kind of Kickstarter-y or pre-order type thing. Check it out, go find that, and you're probably gonna be really happy with this pan. It's, it's, it's cool. I'm gonna happily use this pan. I'm not giving it back. I'm gonna keep using it. I'm gonna use it as part of my regular set. Um, you know, there will be a time when I'm happy to use a lighter pan, I'm sure. Uh, but that is the problem that this solves, which is awesome for me as a retailer, helping people. Because the biggest problem that I run into, as I was saying at the beginning of this video, is that people find weight is an issue and they shy away from heavy cookware and then they're stuck with ceramic or Teflon or whatever. And there's just nothing in between there and these guys nail it. So really cool. So any questions, any comments about that? If there's other cookware that you think is similar to this, I'd love to know. Throw it in the comments and I'll check it out. Thanks so much.